friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Olivia, and if you've never seen my face before, you can consider me your fragrance fairy godmother. So as you can probably tell by the shelves behind me, my fragrance collection has grown absolutely massive, out of control. And that sounds like champagne problems, of course, I'm not complaining. But when it comes to my fragrance collection, I wanna make sure that I am collecting with purpose, not just to have a big number of fragrances, but rather things that I am wholeheartedly 100% in love with. With that being said, I have not done any spring cleaning when it comes to my collection in quite some time. And although I know that it's probably time for a declutter, I'm going to do this a little bit differently than the declutters that I've done in the past. In the past, I have haphazardly declutter without any sort of thought to it. I decide that I don't want that fragrance anymore and I get rid of it. This is often how I clean my house as well. But I am often flooded with regret because I am the type of person that one day I could be absolutely in love with the fragrance and the next day I can't stand it and I decide to get rid of it and a couple months down the road I want it back. Now I don't think this needs to be said, but every single time I've done a declutter, I have people that are upset. They say a couple of months ago, you said that you love that and now you're getting rid of it and I don't trust you anymore. Now I wanna make something very, very clear here. That is just my personality type. When I get something, I might be absolutely obsessed with it and then I forget about it and decide I don't want it anymore. And then a year later, I really, really crave that scent profile. Some people are in love with something for the rest of their lives and they stick with that one thing. I am not that person. It doesn't mean at that time that I was being disingenuous and just talking to talk, but rather that I really, really enjoyed it at the moment. And sometimes it just comes and goes in waves. But I'm going to try and be a little bit more strategic this time around. So instead of just fully decluttering these items for my collection, I am going to be putting them on the chopping block. And what I mean by that is all of the fragrances that I'm talking about in today's video are fragrances that there's something about them that I don't care for at the moment, but I am going to give them a very, very thorough wear before I decide to get rid of them. So these are the fragrances that I'm on the fence about at the moment. So I'm going to give a lot of attention to, to really, really decide if I wanna get rid of them or if I wanna keep them. So this is not a formal declutter, but they are on their last chance. And if they mess up, they are out of here. With that being said, I have 15 different fragrances that I need to get through today. So let's get this party rolling. Get yourself a little drink, a little snack, settle in, and let's get boogieing. Starting off with one that I know is absolutely gonna shock you guys, but listen to my reasoning before you judge. Cherry Punk by Room 1015. I know, I know, I know, but I have a reason, okay? And my reason is, is because I have the x trait version of this, and to me, they smell nearly identical. Now, for those of you who are not familiar with this fragrance, this is a super duper sexy cherry and leather fragrance. And while I love this fragrance so much, I do not necessitate two bottles of something that smells very, very similar. So my natural thought is I am going to go with the x trait version, which is a little bit more concentrated, maybe a little bit darker, but in the air, you can't really smell the difference that much. So I am definitely not getting rid of this fragrance fragrance because I dislike it by any stretch of the imagination because I know that I have turned a lot of people onto this fragrance. So don't think that I'm here switching sides. I am not. I'm not going to get through two bottles when I have a collection this large. So this is simply a numbers game. Next is Musk by My Geisha. Now this is going to be one of those your skin but better sort of musks, a very clean white musk with some white florals and a strong woody base. And this is another fragrance that I don't have anything negative to say about it, but once again, this is very reminiscent to a fragrance that I already have in my collection. This reminds me so much of Cheeky Smile by Juicebox. Now I know you're probably thinking, what makes you choose Cheeky Smile over Musk then? The longevity on Cheeky Smiles is 24 hours long. Now don't get me wrong, Musk is an extra, so it is quite long lasting, but I'm gonna go for the more powerful of the two, just as I did with Cherry Punk. The only thing that has me second guessing when it comes to musk is this has the note of lilac, and I have so few fragrances that have the note of lilac, and it is one of my childhood favorite scents 
of all time. So this is one that I'm going to wear several days in a row to make sure that I am very, very solid in my decision, but I don't think it's one that will leave my house entirely because I know that my husband really enjoys this fragrance. So if I decide that I don't personally have room for it, I'm going to be giving it to him. Now this next one is a shock to me as well because I am obsessed with the House of Mind games, but on the chopping block, is Azulis Diamond. And this is a warm, deep, sweet amber fragrance with a little bit of florals and some green notes. It's got myrrh, incense, tonka bean, notes that I would typically gravitate towards a lot. And some days I really enjoy this, but other days there's something about this that goes a bit antique smelling, a little bit dusty on my skin. And this has the note of broom, which is a flower that can smell kind of honeyed, powdery, a little bit like pollen and fig leaf. And something about the combination of the broom, the resinous ambers, it just can come off a little bit medicinal smelling on my skin. And I like my ambers to be a little bit more woody as opposed to the floral powdery medicinal side. I think that this might be the case that my body chemistry just simply does not work with this fragrance. Now I do have a travel size of this. So if I want to revisit it and I decide that the full bottle is no longer for me, I still have it in my collection to my disposal, but I don't think it's something that I'll ever get through a full size bottle of because it just doesn't drive with me. Next is Cosmic by Kylie Jenner. This is a warm and sheer vanilla musk amber fragrance with a little bit of jasmine. And once again, nothing wrong with this fragrance, but to me, this is a snooze fest. This smells like when you walk into Macy's and you smell all of the fragrances in the women's fragrance department looming in the air. Combination, all at one time. It just smells like a hodgepodge of a million different fragrances that I already have. It doesn't smell bad. It smells very, very pretty and would be great for a beginner or maybe someone a little bit younger that wants something a little bit more simple. But where I'm at in my fragrance journey, I like to have something that's a little bit more daring, a little bit more complex. And although this would be a fabulous day-to-day -day wear, I want something a little bit more edgy than this. And this is another fragrance that I'll probably be giving to my husband because a sweet, simple, musky vanilla with a little jasmine, that is right up his alley. Next is Miami Nectar by Ellis Brooklyn. <sighs> I'm gonna reiterate the same point over and over, but once again, there's nothing wrong with this fragrance, but this is a tropical coconut fragrance of which I probably have 20. This one has a little bit of pineapple, a little bit of frangipani, but I'll be testing it out against my other coconut fragrances. I might even have a week where I dedicate to wear only my coconut fragrances, so that way I can weed out the best ones. But to me, this one just comes off a little bit like copper tone, a little bit like sunscreen, and it just doesn't speak to me. Now this next one is unique but I am very much on the fence about it. And that is Born to be Unforgettable by Killian. Now this is a very interesting fragrance because this smells like Coca-Cola with a wedge of lime. And as this dries down, you start to get some spiciness from nutmeg and a very woody dry down. And although I really enjoy the opening on this, the dry down does not work with my body chemistry. It goes a little bit salty, spicy, funky. And I can't really see myself wanting to smell like pop very frequently, but if I did, I would choose Soda Snob by Sniff because this one is a little bit sweeter and dries nicer on my skin, but still gives me that Coca-Cola sort of vibe. Next, I have two from Dime Beauty. So let's start with Core Memory. And this is very aptly named Core Memory because this smells exactly like Light Blue by Dolce & Gabbana, which does bring up some core memories that Perhaps I don't really wanna remember all that much. You feel me? I used to wear light blue back in the day when I was an absolute scoundrel, and I can look back fondly at those moments and objectively laugh at them, but sometimes if I'm not in the right mood and I smell light blue, it kinda takes me back to a dark place in my life. So although this smells fantastic and I really enjoy the scent of light blue, I just don't think that I could actually actively wear it anymore because it triggers something for me. And the next is Seven Summers. And this smells very, very 
very similar to Ariana Grande's Cloud. And because Cloud bears somewhat of a resemblance to Baccarat Rouge, I have a million different iterations that smell a little bit like Cloud, a little bit like Baccarat Rouge, so it's become heavily redundant. So it looks like my husband will be getting another fragrance from me. Next is 903 from Bon Parfumier. And this one is an oud and saffron fragrance. I'm finding out about myself that no matter how much I try, I just can't get along with oud. I can't. Especially oud that has a little bit of that damp, earthy quality because it just comes off fecal to me. I can't do it. Oddly enough, I gave this to my brother and it smells fantastic on him. I don't get anything weird or animalic or fecal or damp smelling on him at all. But on me, uh-uh. This goes south. And I really love a good woody fragrance, but this one, I just have to call it like it is. It doesn't work for me. Next is from the men's grooming company Huron, and this is Sea Salt and Driftwood. This is just a very calm, clean, fresh out of the shower, a little bit masculine fragrance. And this would be good for a guy who's not really into fragrance. Maybe he just wants something fresh to wear to work or the gym. But this is simply one of the cases in which this is just not to the level of uniqueness that I wanna wear on a day-to-day -day basis. This is a very easy going, easy to enjoy fragrance that I think my dad or my brother might like because they're not quite as into fragrances as myself. Although I gave my dad a bottle of Supernova by Andrea Mack and he says that it makes him feel like he won the lottery and he's showing off. So his taste might be elevating a little bit. This might be a little too simple for him now, but for the gym, it's a good, easy reach. It's just not something that I'm really using. Next is Gravel by Hazel. Now this is a fragrance that comes off a little bit vintage, powdery, and soapy. It's got iris, musk, and neroli, and is a nice nod to a more vintage scent profile. And when I first tried this, I really enjoyed it. The iris came out a little bit more, but as time went on, that neroli started to really jump out on my skin and started to become a little bit sharp and metallic, and dare I say, a little bit indolic. So it went from being powdery, soft, clean, soapy vintage to smelling a little bit like pee on me. And I just have fragrances that I like better that air towards that more vintage side that I would draw for before this one. Now for this one, I am undecided as to which one is going to go, but I have Mula Mula and Mula Mula Double Caramel. Now these are fantastic. These are fantastic, mark my words. I do not regret having either of these, but these come off very, very similarly. Now, both of these smell very, very similar to La Capitale by Zerzhov, but with an amped up caramel in the background. And I do like that added extra sweetness, so I will be keeping one of these and La Capitale, but these are just a little bit too similar to each other to have both of them. And I know this is gonna sound really silly, because I like the double caramel a little bit better, but I actually really like the bottle of Mula Mula much better. This is the Art Deco bottle. If I'm splitting hairs, I like the scent of this one better, but objectively, I like this bottle better. So it's a toss up, I don't know. Oh, this next one hurts because I love the House of Electimus, but this one, there's a note that's testing me. So this is Cupid's Kiss, and this is a really beautiful, powdery, musky suede and wood fragrance. But this has the note of Immortel, which I just don't like. Immortel kind of smells like a powdery herbal leather with a little bit of sweetness. It Mm -mm. And it makes me so sad because I love the little spiciness from the pink pepper, a really delicate suede, some smooth sandalwood, but that immortel screams on my skin and just makes it smell bitter. Now this one I might hold on to for a long time because these notes typically do a little bit better in winter time, so I might have to test this again in fall, but as for now, that immortel, I can't. And these last two is another stab to the heart because I love the house of Nishane, but these two are not working for me. Starting off with Shin and I. Now when smelling this out of the bottle, this smells like a delicious, creamy, natural, slightly indolic jasmine, gardenia, tuberose. It's a beautiful white floral, but when I wear it, there's the note of sep, which is a mushroom, and the note of civet. And Nishane does white florals like nobody else. This starts off so beautiful on the skin, but it goes really animalic on me. And I'm just not at a place in my fragrance journey where I enjoy animalic scents. I know that for a lot of people, an animalic touch gives it a little bit of raunchy sexiness, but for me, I just feel dirty and I'm not into it. 
I'm just not into it. I have to be honest with myself. So although when I smell it out of the bottle, it is magnificent. I just don't like it on my skin. And lastly is Favonius. Now this is a rose incense patchouli oud of which I have quite a collection of that sort of scent profile by now. But this is an oud that airs more on the, shall we say, barnyard side of things. Just simply a matter of a scent profile that I don't really care for and I don't think I ever will. I'll never say never, but I have a sneaking suspicion that given that I grew up near barnyards, I don't think I'll want that anytime soon. So that's all I've got for you guys today. These are ones that are tentatively leaving my collection, but I am going to give them a fair shot. I will give them a proper several days wear to see if I change my mind about them. And if I don't, then I'm just gonna have to say say la vie. So I'm curious to know if you guys have any fragrances in your collection that test your nerves. So if you do, comment them down below. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next Saturday, 10 a.m. PST. And while we're here, can you guys just double check if you're subscribed or not? Like if you actually, not if you just come and watch the videos, but if you're like subscribe, subscribe, because it does help my channel. Thank you for checking that. I appreciate you. And until next Saturday, take care of yourselves, my friends.